Hello, Karura, and welcome to church this Resurrection Sunday. It is Celebration Sunday, and we are so glad that you chose to be with us today. My name is Imani Mora, and I'm your service host for today, and I'm joined by... And I am Mikal Imbukwa. I'm glad to, ho to host alongside Imani. Yeah, so I want to welcome everyone joining us online. Feel welcome. Yes, yes, feel welcome and it's celebration. It is Resurrection Sunday. And I want to ask you, how do you say Jesus is alive in your vernacular, in your mother tongue? Mikhail, can you tell us how you say Jesus is alive? In Luya, we say, Umami Yesu Usimukohere. What, what about you? Wow, that's a, a, a unique tongue right there. I can easily say, Yesu Ame Fufuka. Or I can say, Jesu Nemurioku. So I want you to turn to your neighbor, somebody seated next to you, behind you, in front of you. Tell them how you say, Jesus is alive. If you're joining us online, say it. Write it there, type it. How do you say Jesus is alive? Let's get going and uh, interact. I, I am out here. I can see some people walking in. Let me see if we can get somebody here to tell us how you say Jesus is alive, even as you talk to your neighbor. Uh, let me find somebody who is walking in church right now to tell us how Jesus is alive. Uh, let me go right here. Hello. I'm fine, thank you. I want you to tell us Jesus is alive in your mother tongue. Uh, yes, sir, they more. Right, you've heard that. How do you say Jesus is alive in Swahili? Say yes, I'm a fufuka. Yes, I'm a fufuka. All right, so continue telling people how you say Jesus is alive. And we are now going to get started. Uh, if we can stand up and let's pray together even as we get this service started. For the Lord, we thank you for this is the day that you have made. We rejoice and we are very glad in it. As we worship you in song, as we lift our voices and lift our hands, I pray that your presence will be with us. Thank you for each and every person who's joined us in person. Thank you for those who are joining us online. I pray that you may uh, bless them even as they continue with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And let's put our hands together for Karura Voices. Church, are we ready to praise the Lord? Are we ready to celebrate the fact that Jesus is alive? All right. I want us to say John 3.16 together. All right. All right. So John 3.16, what does it say? John, <laughs> clap for yourselves. <laughs> All right, man, can we do this? So want us to clap our hands like this and move like this. Make sure you have a smile on your face. All right? Hey, we want to celebrate the Lord. Come on, 
an African way. Very simple. Come on. Step like this.
risen. He is risen. He is no longer dead but risen. And in our lives he is risen. Child of God, why don't you go before him? For you know where he has risen in your life and just exalt his name. Exalt him, exalt him, exalt him, exalt him. Adore his holy name. Glorify him. Take a moment, child of God. Take a moment, child of God.
it was all finished. At Calvary, death no longer has any victory. At Calvary, the chains that bonded us had broken. At Calvary, we are free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for the price you paid at Calvary. You endured a lot because of us to be reconciled back to the Father. You paid, you faced the shame because of us. And today we proclaim that at Calvary, at Calvary, we receive our freedom. Because of Calvary, we are saved. Because of Calvary, our weight has been taken away. We thank you for the price you paid. And this morning, I want to speak to someone who it is done. And by faith, you can walk in victory. By faith, you can walk in freedom. By faith, you will walk in salvation in Jesus' name. And I want to bring for the Lord all the prayers that are represented here. A number of hair on our head. Your word reminds us that you have engraved us at the palms of your hands. You know us, God. And so I pray that you may speak to that person who's crying out to you. You may speak to that person who's raising up their hands, raising up their voices to you, oh God. May you hear the Christ. And I pray that, Lord, even as she goes through treatment, because of what you did at Calvary, I speak healing in her body in Jesus' name. We also stand with our pastor purity, even as the brother is still sick in hospital. I pray that, Lord, you may send your healing power even unto him. And anyone else in this congregation who is unwell, Lord, at Calvary we received our healing. And we call you Jehovah Rapha because that's who you are. Even for those who are joining us online, wherever they are and they are unwell, Lord, I speak your healing power unto them. May you heal them and make them whole. And Lord, for all the other needs that have been mentioned here, that have been represented here on behalf of our family members, for our businesses, for our workplaces, for our country and our community. Lord, I bring them all unto you. May you answer your children this morning as we continue to celebrate what you did in Calvary. And church, this morning, we are going to go together into a time of Holy Communion and I'll invite you to have your seats. And in case you're there and you do not have the elements, just put your hand up and the ushers will be able to see you and serve you even as the worship team sings this one verse as we transition into Holy Communion. If you do not have the elements, just put your hands up and our ushers will be able to see you. Savior say, thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Holy Communion 
I'm going to read from verse 17 where it says, When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me. It is the one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Verse 22. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. I welcome all of us to take the, the, the bread together. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. Let us together partake of the blood. We thank you, Jesus, for the price you paid. Even as we have taken the bread and the blood that symbolizes your body and the blood that you shed on the cross for us. May that blood that has power also have power in our lives today. Have power in our situations today. Have power in everything that pertains us. And we thank you for the blood. We thank you for the cross. In Jesus' name I pray.
appreciate Karura voices and the volunteers are the Kisima champions, the ushering department, the sound team, the sign language interpreters and everyone else leading today. Yes and help me appreciate your neighbor and appreciate yourself for being here this morning. We really really appreciate that you are part and parcel of this. And even for those who are joining us online on Facebook and YouTube, Karibuni Sana, you may have your seats. Yeah, so at Karura, we have a, a, a power-packed children's ministry called Kisima Champions for children aged between, 12 to, between 2 to 12. And we normally release the children direct to their service. But if you still have your child here, we would like to release them. We also have a crash at Bandawan for nursing parents. So if you are a nursing parent, don't feel stranded. We also have the youth church for the youth. So if you are a youth in here, please feel free to join the youth church. All right, let's give thanks for all the services that are happening right now. And allow me to pray even for our children and our youth as they continue with their service. Father Lord, we thank you for Karura Community Chapel. Thank you even for the opportunity to be able to serve the different uh, age groups that are here. We thank you for our children at Kisima Center as they continue with their service. I pray for the children, the teachers, and all the volunteers that are there. May you bless them and be with them even as they continue with their service. Thank you for the parents as, uh, who are nursing their children in Banda Wana, the crash, oh God. Father Lord, bless them and thank you that they were able even to come and gather together even as we lift your name on high. We thank you for our youth and thank you for the zeal that they have to follow you, oh God. Father, I pray that you may bless them even at the youth church um, uh, as they hear the word, may it have a, a solid place in their lives to the glory and honor of your name. I thank you and I bless your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Even as we continue with the service, uh, let us know what is your name. You are new to some people today and we didn't get to introduce ourselves. Let us know your name. Yeah, so my name is Mikal Imbukwa and I'm so honored to host alongside Amani today. Yes, my name is Imani. I serve here at the Worship and Services Ministry. We are very, very glad to be your service host for today. And um, parents who are here, parents, uncles and aunties, guardians, neighbors to parents, I want to bring to you a wonderful and exciting uh, thing that is happening to the children from the 9th to the 13th of April. We have the vocational Bible school that is happening here at Karua Community Chapel. It is happening from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. So parents, I want you to plan for this, release your children. You can even invite your neighbor's children because the teachers will be teaching them life skills as well as the word of God. So again, mark your calendars, April 9th, to the 13th, here at Karua Community Chapel, we will have the vocational Bible school for the children. Yes, and at Karura, we love visitors. So if you are joining us for the first time online, please type in the comment section, first time, and our Karura family will attend to you. Do we have anyone joining us for the first time today? Any first time visitors? Please raise your hand. Yes. Clap for them. The ushers will hand you uh, a card, a connection card. So fill it and uh, drop it at the offertory basket bo box as you exit, uh, when you'll be exiting. Yes, and this week has been a week full of activities here at Karura Community Chapel. From Monday to Friday, as we journeyed through the cross and what uh, happened to Jesus this week, we held a time of prayer every evening from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Zoom. And quite a number of us were able to join us. Let me just ask, if you were there for any day, Monday to Friday, for the Zoom prayer meeting in the evening, may we just see your hand? 
anyone. Awesome. Look at those hands. Thank you so much for being part of that and for being part of what God is doing at Karura Community Chapel. And then on Wednesday, we had the Pasaka Praise Wednesday. Yes. And let me tell you, if you are not here, let me just start by telling you this place was packed. We had quite a number of people who joined us for that. We had Dr. Ipiana all the way from Tanzania. We had Reverend George, not George Shiramba, but Reverend George Masharia from City Lighters Church who was here with us. And we had 86 people rededicate their lives to Christ. If there is a moment to praise the Lord, that is the yes. moment to praise the Lord. And then on Friday, again, quite a number of you joined us here for our Friday Good, Good Friday service. And today you are here with us. We thank each and every one of you for being part of this community at Karura. Thank you so much. Oh, yes. And if you're a registered member of Karura Community Chapel, the church leadership welcomes you to the AGM, which will be held in person and virtually on April 13th in 2024 from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Thank you. And as we transition, we want to show you and share with you what God has been doing in our community. And I will welcome Pastor Minor to join me here on stage. Let us put our hands together and, and, and for Pastor Minor and the mission team, even as they share with us what God is doing. Let's welcome them until they get here. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I want to apologize. Uh, we took uh, some extra minutes. You know we are not used on the stage, so bear with us a little bit. Uh, will not take very long. Today is uh, five months since uh, the people and these good people you are seeing here, we met them. That is Malindi. Now they represent our church plants. Now we started all the way from Teso, which is in Busia, and then we went to Wundanyi in Taita. We have been here in Nairobi, Mushada, and Gedogoro. And then the newest children and members of Karura family are in Malindi, Koro, Ki, and Miji Kenda. So today I'm really glad because of what you have done. Missions is not a, a department. Mission is a church-wide affair. And you guys, you have been wonderful. Remember when Corona came? Karura never shut down. Actually, communication came up. We went through the media, but still on the ground you were there. And you guys were feeding 10,000 people every week because of what you do and how you are connected to mission. I cannot say everything that we do today because time will not allow, but I want to thank you very much for what we do. Uh, this week and uh, the five months that we have been uh, uh, working along with this team, it's not only the missions team per se which has been working with them. We have had the services come there. We have had uh, Rose come there. We had we even uh, had a volunteer medical doctor Time walk, we just walk, walk with us where we are. So we thank you for offering and everything that you do to support mission. We are really grateful. So without further ado, I'm going to invite the lead pastor here. Uh, there are two of them. Actually, the interesting thing is two churches were opened and launched same time. So we have a twin church in uh, Malindi. I'm going to ask uh, Anthony, Pastor Anthony and his spouse uh, to come and they will speak just briefly, greet us. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Bona Yesu Praise the Lord. Before I speak, allow me to invite my beautiful wife. Good morning. Uh, my name is Yvonne Atieno, formerly Otieno, currently Obara, so I'm Miss, Mrs. Yvonne Obara, uh, a mother to these beautiful children, Sifa and Faraja. They are twins. 
coincidentally, we have twin churches in Malindi. And uh, my children and I happen to be the first congregants of Karura Community Chapel in Malindi, situated at Coral Key. Uh, received greetings from our home church. Mesalimiwa sana kule tuongea kiswahili. Karibuni sana. Amen. Please appreciate my beautiful wife. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, this is uh, Sifa and this is Faraja. And of course, together with my wife, they are, or they were our first congregants. I want to just ask our other members just to step forward, if you don't mind. Members of Karura Community Chapel, Malindi, just step forward and wave at the congregation. Appreciate our members. <laughs> Hallelujah. So from, from uh, two or four members, we are now uh, grown to around 20 plus members. We bless the Lord for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. And our, our target uh, congregation is the white-collar uh, people, blue-collar people, and no-collar people. Bona sifiwe. We are targeting everyone who, as uh, our church, we always say we love God and we love God's people. Praise the Lord. So we bless the Lord so much. And uh, we are trying to work on a, on a mission where we want to target prostitutes and uh, people who are actually suffering with drug abuse issues. So we want to thank uh, Pastor Fred and his team who have been so much uh, of a blessing to us for the last five months. So maybe you're wondering, do we have challenges? Yes, we have challenges and we're asking you to stand with us in prayer. Challenge number one, yes, we are uh, located at Coral Key. Coral Key is being used for, uh, as free of charge for all of us. It's a basketball court, by the way. We used to uh, do ministry there for a couple of years. And the basketball team gave us that uh, court to use for some time. And we bless the Lord for that. Our challenge is that we need to find a land for us to lease or possibly a permanent ground. This will give us an opportunity to expand as a church to be able to do what you guys are doing. Have a space for the children, have a space for the youth, and also for the main church. In the same regard, talking about the church, we are trusting God for a 200-seater tent for the main church. And of course, 200 seats. We are trusting God for uh, a 100-seater tent for the uh, uh, children's ministry. We have lost around five members because we don't have a children's ministry that has the capacity to take care of the children. So we are asking you to stand with us in prayer and also in support as we try to build this uh, amazing department. And finally, we also trust in God for a sound system and very uh, vibrant uh, uh, instruments for our praise and worship team. Behind here, we have serious praise and worship uh, leaders. The only challenge is that we are trying our best by the grace of God to grow and to also acquire all these amazing things for us to serve God and serve God's people. By any chance, if you want to come to Malindi and you're looking for tour operators or tour guides, please call Pastor Tony and Malindi, uh, Malindi Church and we'll be definitely there to serve you. Mbariki wesama. Without further ado, I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Dan Nyambane and his wife, F Faustin, and their daughter. Uh, they are representing the Miji Kenda community, actually 70 meters to the Indian Ocean. That's where our, the, our the church is. Praise God, church. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Uh, let me first introduce my beautiful wife, and she can say something. Good morning, church. Good morning. My name is Faustin. I serve in Mijikenda Community Chapel, Karura Chapel, with my husband, Daniel. Thank you. Uh, let's clap for her. It's her first time talking in front of a, a big crowd. She's very shy. And I thank God for her. This is our beautiful daughter, uh, Gigi. We are the first congregants in Mijikenda. You, I know you wonder why it's called Mijikenda. It's a fisherman's village. Kijiji Chama Baharia. So our main uh, income in Atoka Kwa Bahari is fishing. So uh, the challenges we're facing, uh, that's the first, that's we're giving hope to the community. The first, the challenges we're facing uh, is poverty stricken, that's the first thing. School dropouts. Currently, we're experiencing rains, and most of the houses, the Makuti type houses, are leaking. And then we have infestations of jiggers and bed bugs. And right now, mosquitoes, and we're, we're facing the challenge of we don't have mosquito nets. 
And uh, that's what I'm ministering. That's our each and every day service, each and every day fellowship. You're welcome in Malindi. And of all that, uh, let me introduce uh, our Amze here. It's good to say hi. Let him just salute. Let him salute. Let's salute back. We are blessed the first day we launched our church. We are blessed. He offered a piece of land in the village for us to build a church. And are we blessed? Are we blessed? That's where we are. And we thank God. Now we are praying. You pray with us so that we can build a church which can offer a home, a place to fellowship, and where we can give hope to the Mijikenda community. Kijiji cha? Kijiji cha? Mabaharia. Nashukuru sana. Mbarikiwe. Amen. And as our pastor comes, I just want to remind us, this coming week, our young people will be traveling to the same place to do missions. So pray for them and uh, support them in every way. I will not forget uh, <laughs> Isaiah and Matayo, who are the big connection to what we do. Children's ministry is a connector. That's why I was saying it's a whole church affair. It's not a one-man affair. It is a whole church affair. Karibu, Pastor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Fred. Thank you, Pastor Fred and the team. Uh, we, whenever we go into a community, we don't like to assume that we know the needs of those community. And whenever God provides people in that community to lead uh, that particular community, we are always very grateful and we, are, we support them in that way. Some of you here have also given part of some of your land and plots for churches in those areas, and we are very grateful for that. I'm going to uh, just commission, I'll start with Pastor Anthony and his wife, if you could please step forward and to commission you before the Karura Community Chapel. No, we anointed you at the 9 o'clock service, but before this congregation, we now want to anoint you uh, in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now, Anthony, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And with the same anointing, may it flow to your wife as she stands by you and ministers with you before God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. May your children and all the congregation that you minister with be blessed. Amen. Thank you. I want to ask Pastor Dan, Daniel and his family to please come forward. Pastor Daniel. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. We therefore anoint you in the name of God the Father, who is also the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And with the same anointing, we anoint your wife who stands by you, ministering together, together with your daughter, and the team that you have come with, that the Lord God himself will go ahead of you and give you clarity and open doors for you that you may minister for him. Bless the rest of the congregation that you stand up as we pray for this team now. Our Father, we want to thank you and to bless you because of your goodness and your mercy to this team that you have anointed to minister in that particular area. And as a congregation, we stand with them, symbolically standing, but also standing with them in prayer and financially and in every way that we can to be able to support them. This we pray in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. 
I'm going to ask our pastors to step forward, Pastor Juma, to give them some symbols and you can explain to them what that means. Okay, Pastor Dan, here I have some items, the Bible, towel, constitution, and the vision book for Karura Community Chapel. The Bible, Pastor uh, Dan, as a family of Karura, we present this to you, the word of God, the foundation of our faith, and the guide for our lives. May it continue to inspire and lead you. The towel, we offer this towel as a symbol of humility and service, reminding us that Christ's examples of washing the feet of his disciples may it remind you of your call to serve the congregation that God has blessed within your hands. Then the constitution. Pastor Dan, here is the constitution of Karura Community Chapel our church, outlining our beliefs, values, and principles. May it guide us, may it guide you, as we work together in fulfilling the mission and the vision of our community. Pastor Dan, we present this vision book refle reflecting the dreams and the aspirations of our church, our church community. May it inspire you to lead towards a future filled with faith hope, and love. This is Pastor Juma. Next, I have Pastor Riviro. I'll first of all ask him to introduce this lady that he's standing with and then pass the next instruments to Aunt. Praise the Lord, Church. My name is Pastor Riviro, working together with my wife, Lecho. You can say hi. Praise the Lord, Church. I'm Rachel Ribeiro, and I count it a privilege to be serving alongside this team. Amen. Pastor Tony. Uh, Pastor Tony uh, from Maridi. We have the Bible, we have the towel, we have the constitution, and we have our vision. Uh, the Bible is a word of God that teaches us to go deeper in the word of the Lord. The towel stands for you are a servant, servanthood. You have been called to be humble. Uh, the constitution is who we are and we like you to carry on because this is a call for all of us as a church to remain there and to have the same DNA. Um, the vision becoming Christ-like disciples. This is a call all of, all, for all of us and still extending this to Maridi. By the grace of God, amen. Great. Amen. Let's appreciate them. Thank you so much, team. May God bless you all. Uh, uh, we can now release them. They have been here since the 9 o'clock service, and we are very grateful. Thank you very much, our pastors. Yeah. We now go to our next session where we come to worship the Lord with our tithes, with our offering, with our giving, with our thanksgiving sacrifices that we may have come with. The ushers will be waiting on you, those of you who have cash. For those of you who are giving electronically, the details will be up on the screen. For those of you who need to use the PDQ, it will be at the ushers desk. For those of you who are online, again, the details will be up on the screen for you uh, to give. Um, I'll also ask, in case you have the elements that, uh, the, what the remains of the elements used for Holy Communion, just pass them to the end of the aisles. The ushers, um, We'll be picking them as they serve you uh, the baskets for the for the for the offering. I also want to thank the ushers very much. These are our ex candidates. That means they did their exams uh, last year in the Kenyan system. Let's appreciate these young people. Thank you so much. And uh, they are the ones who are going for missions to Malindi. Pastor Fred, we we're free to release you and your team. Uh, we thank you so much. Ashas, please wait on us at this particular time and also collect the remains of the elements and wash it.
for us. Kindly follow them and listen to the wonderful music as they bless your heart. I want to thank everyone for giving this morning and as uh, Reverend Shiramba said that today we have been served by ex-candidates and they are joining the team from Malindi Fisherman's Camp for uh, um, they're going to serve there so i want you to remember them in prayer uh if you see them after the service support them in any way that you are able to even as they go on that mission let's give thanks for the giving this morning Father Lord, we thank you for the giving of your sons and daughters. Thank you for what these uh, resources will do to the advancement of your kingdom, O oh God. And I pray that you may bless each one of us, O oh God. You may bless the works of our hands. You may bless our businesses. You may bless us in all that we do. May it bring glory and honor to your name. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to invite us to be upstanding even as we read the scripture for today and welcome our our speaker for the day the scripture for today is from the book of first corinthians chapter 15 verse 1 to 28 first corinthians 15 1 to 28 and i'm going to read it for us now, I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to twelve, and then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, last of all, as to one untimely born. He appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and by his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me, whether then it was I or they. So we preach, and so you believed the resurrection of the dead. Verse 12. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise. If it is true that, that the dead are not raised, for if the dead are not raised, 
not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are all people most to be pitied. Verse 20. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits. Then as his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is expected who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the son then the son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him that God may be all in all. Thank God for the reading of his word. And Father Lord, we thank you for your servant, Pastor Wallace, even as he comes forth to share your word. May it find a fertile ground in our hearts. And I pray that the words of his mouth and the meditation of his heart be acceptable unto you. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Imani for uh, leading us in reading God's Word this morning. That's where we will spend most of the time uh, studying and breaking down the book of 1 Corinthians 15. And I'm sure when we were coming in in the service, Imani and the service host, the, um, my sister, asked us to share what we normally say in our mother tongue or how we say in our mother tongue that Jesus is alive. So I'd like to give you an opportunity for those who just walked in as the service was continuing, just share with the person who's sitting next to you, what do you say? What do you normally say in your mother tongue that Jesus is alive? What's that? Two seconds. For those who are born in Nairobi, you can use Sheng. For those who are watching us online, you can type. All right, so there's something stinging songs in our native language, our original language, the language that we grew up knowing. This is just something different. It's somehow, that language somehow solidifies what we are saying and it allows us to be able to comprehend or, or understand what we are saying as Christians. And that's why we are giving each other an opportunity to just take some time so that we can absorb the three words, the three key words that we are saying this morning that Jesus is alive or he is risen or Jesus is risen, uh, whichever one uh, you prefer. We are giving ourselves time to just understand and be able to know uh, what, what does it mean for me and what does it mean for my family. And the reason of this is because Jesus' death and resurrection, what we've been talking about from Friday with Pastor Martin and through to today, is central to the message of the gospel. The entire foundation of the letters that we read in the New Testament is the belief that Jesus is real and he is the Savior who resurrected and is now exalted as the head of the church. He is the one that we worship as we wait for the coming back, for his coming back on earth. That's why we gather here every single Sunday. That's why we gather in our community life groups. That's why we share devotions. That's why we were sharing communion earlier this morning. That's, that's what our faith is based on. All the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all tell us uh, and give us a witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And when we refer to the Gospel, we speak not of fairy tales or good advice, or the perspectives of men that we like sharing different perspectives or opening podcasts these days. Um, but we just want to share the real factual things of the Bible that we hold our faith on. 
We are living in a time where we freely share our views based on our perspectives or life backgrounds, knowledge, um, where we got educated. But what we are celebrating over this weekend, it's, it's, it's not someone's philosophical views as Paul is going to tell us in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians 15. They are facts. And that guides us even as we break down the book of 1 Corinthians. So it's in two parts, and we're going to look at it in two different parts. Two questions that you can ask. Number one, what confirms the resurrection of Jesus Christ? And then number two, what does the resurrection of Jesus Christ confirm? So what confirms the resurrection of Jesus Christ? And what does the resurrection of Jesus Christ confirm? I'm going to start from verse 3, and then we're going to go to verse 1, and then we see where um, God takes us. Verse 3, for I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day again in accordance with the Scriptures. The first thing that confirms that Paul is saying here is the first thing that confirms the resurrection of Jesus Christ are the Scriptures. The authority and the sufficiency of God's word confirm the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And when Paul is talking about um, in accordance with the scriptures, what he's referring to is what the prophets um, talked about in the Old Testament. At that time, he's referring to the, the scrolls that they were reading um, at that time. That is Psalm 22, and you can find this in Psalm 22. Hosea 6 and verse 2, for those who are taking notes. Isaiah 53, 4 to 10. I'm sure we shared this on Friday. And in the New Testament, we meet Jesus um, prophesying of this occurrence. He says that for this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down for my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. He's telling them about the resurrection. He's telling his disciples about the, his own resurrection. This shows that God's word is true and we can rely on it. The, words, the word of God, the scriptures confirm his own resurrection. The second thing that Paul tells us as we continue to read in verse 5 are the witnesses. He says, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. He gives us different groupings of people who saw Jesus Christ, uh, resurrected Jesus Christ. So he says, and that appeared to Kephas and then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time. He's careful to write more than 500 brothers at one time. Just so that we know that he did not appear to a group of people. Um, he again goes into more detail, saying most of whom are still alive. So if you want to confirm this, most of the people are still alive. You can go and ask them. They are here to confirm that Jesus Christ is alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James. It's good to note that this is the half-brother of Jesus. And then to all the apostles. Most of these people who witnessed the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And for, thus, for those of us who have been following what happened today morning from Luke 24, 1 to 2, Mary Magdalene going to the tomb and finding that Jesus is not the, some of the earliest witnesses. Most of these people are still alive when Paul is writing this letter. And when he writes, he appeared to more than 500 brothers. What he's saying is that we are not hallucinating about this occurrence. It's true. It happened. These witnesses can confirm that Jesus Christ is alive. In case that we are faced with a challenge, uh, people are challenging our faith, or people are challenging what we believe in today, there are scriptures to confirm what we believe and what we are celebrating today. More than that, there are witnesses to confirm what Paul is writing in 1 Corinthians 15. In Acts 2, Peter, one of the apostles, again writes in verse 32, I'm going to jump to verse 32, that God raised us from the dead and we are all witnesses of this. Now he is exalted to the place of the highest honor in heaven at God's right hand. These apostles, including Peter, they are willing to die. And they are willing to suffer for these claims. These are people who they don't just have conviction 
or a feeling. There are people who are very sure of what they are talking about, that they are sure they are ready to die for what they believe in. They are ready to suffer for what they believe in. And they are willing not to go back to saying that Jesus Christ is not alive. We continue to read in verse 8 of 1 Corinthians 15. Last of all, as one to the untimely born, he appeared also to me. So this is what Paul is saying, that he appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether it was I or they, so we preached and so you believed. Now people like Paul, who were unlikely to be converted to this belief. He was persecuting the church then, one of the propagators that Jesus Christ is not alive and what you, you the apostles, were teaching then is a lie. Some of these people were converted nonetheless by means of personal experiences with Jesus, the resurrected Christ. And you see this in Acts 9, if you want to read the story of Paul um, on his way to Damascus. These are people who... You know, like just in the church of Corinth at that time, there are people who, whose faith was being challenged. And we find ourselves at the same state, sadly at the same state as the church in Corinth. We find ourselves acting in a way that suggests that we do not understand or believe that Jesus Christ is risen. They were perhaps not outwardly um, denying the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They were somehow questioning the doctrine of the resurrection that is so foundational in our faith and in their faith then, but also very foundational in our faith today, either knowingly or unknowingly because of a lack of understanding of the significance of the resurrection. Today, we find ourselves, for those who are believers and they just walked in here today, we find ourselves again still unable and probably we might never be able to fully comprehend what the resurrection of Jesus Christ means. But we find ourselves slowly, the gospel being diluted among us by how we live our lives, how we sing, how we interact with other people, what we read, or what we hold dear most to our lives. You know, this weekend happens to be full of so many distractions, some good, some bad. Whether it's, it's Easter bunnies that that are there to distract us from the main thing, or the eggs, or the rallies um, that we now have, or secular concerts. It's an opportunity for most people to make, to drink and make merry, to just spend time with their family members. We are calling this time a midterm in our busy schedules, going back to work on Monday, or some of us on Tuesday. But what are, we are being encouraged or being challenged to do this morning by Paul is to keep the main thing the main thing. Remember why Jesus Christ died. And that forms the part, the second part of what we are looking at today, what Paul is telling us in chapter 15. So number one, what confirms um, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Number two, what does the resurrection of Jesus Christ confirm? What does it confirm? And how does it lead us to live different lives? How does it challenge us to respond to the challenges that we have in, this, in our lives, in the different spaces that we find ourselves? Number one, it confirms that Jesus Christ is God. At the bare minimum, the gospel requirements, what we as believers commit to, at the bare minimum, we commit to the dirty, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is what we say that we believe in. And Paul confirms that in verse 12. We continue to read that now. If Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain. What we are celebrating here about Malindi and Mijikenda and Teso, and us gathering here every Sunday, it's in vain, it's a waste of time. That's what Paul is saying. What we gather here to preach and to say that Jesus Christ is God, and that my faith in Jesus, I have faith in Jesus Christ, then it's, it's a lie, it's a waste of time. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise. If it is true that the dead are not raised. What the beauty of this is that we can already confirm 
that Jesus Christ is alive. And so what Paul is saying here is that we can confirm that Jesus Christ is God. The one who we are representing is actually true. The words that we are saying that Jesus Christ is God are true. God is the bearer of life. He is the only one who could conquer death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ proves that he is God. The truth was confirmed in his birth. It was confirmed when he was being baptized, when God, when God the Father confirms that this is my son and the Holy Spirit all come as one and we've been taught that by a senior pastor. They all confirm that this is the son of God and he is God that we believe in. And finally, it is confirmed. This truth is confirmed in his resurrection. If Jesus Christ had not resurrected, then it means he was not God. Then that makes him a false prophet. It makes him a liar. It makes everything that we believe in false. Everything that Jesus had claimed he was, he is. That he is God. That he will destroy and raise up the, the temple in three days. That he is the resurrection and the life. That he is the way, the truth, and the life. That whoever sees him has seen the Father. That he is the I am. That before Abraham, I am. All these, all these truths and everything that Jesus claims in the gospel, what we read in the gospel, is confirmed by his resurrection. Without the resurrection, he becomes a liar. And Jesus, in Romans 1 and 4, Paul continues to write that Jesus was declared to be the Son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead. It is the resurrection of Jesus that reveals his true nature to all, for all to see, that God has exalted him at his right hand as the leader and savior and the one who has redeemed us from all our sins. And what does this mean for us in our lives? How do we respond to this truth that Jesus Christ is God? We are encouraged in verse 1. Let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, Paul writes, of the good news I preached to you before. You welcomed it then. This is the good news that Paul is talking about. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. He's saying, be steadfast. Be immovable. Our labor in Christ is not in vain. Whenever we are meeting here every Sunday, whenever we are saying that we are dying to self, and we want to gain in Christ, it's not, it's not something that we are just saying. So stand firm in our faith. Even when we are going through challenges, when we are going through a season of confusion or different seasons of confusion, let's stand firm in faith. That's what Paul is saying. It is the good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. Being told, let us remind ourselves of this truth. How do we remind ourselves of this truth? By meeting every single day. By our family gatherings, our family devotions, we are teaching this to our children, telling them that Jesus Christ is God, the young people, the, the children, the youth ministry, and everyone who we come across, we are challenging and reminding them that Jesus Christ is God. These are opportunities for us to remind ourselves that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The second thing that the resurrection of Jesus Christ confirms is our justification, us being made right with God. Verse 16, for if the dead are not raised, I'm still at chapter 15, for if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. This is so important. We are still in our sins. We are still sinners. So nothing, nothing has changed. We are still dead in our trespasses. Nothing has happened or has changed.